into today's vlog, I want to say a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions of people come together to take the next step in their creative journey. It's suitable for beginners, pros, dabblers and masters. Skillshare has classes to fit your schedule and skill level. Members get unlimited access to thousands, and I mean thousands, of inspiring classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions. Even for those of us who are particularly busy, it's perfect. Most classes are under 60 minutes and with short lessons to fit any schedule. Outside of my busy work as a doctor, I love doing Skillshare classes. It makes me feel creative and fulfilled outside of work. This is your chance to learn something new that you've always wanted to try. I'm really excited about doing the Gary Vaynerchuk class context is key social media strategy in a noisy online world i think it's amazing that skillshare gives you the opportunity to have online tuition from people like gary v the first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity now's the perfect time to sign up hello my lovely youtube family how are you all doing um i am doing a shift it's sunday it's 10 to 2 in the afternoon i'm sitting in the hospital car park and i'm about to work a two till midnight shift so once again you guys can come along with me and we can see what kind of patients i see today and um, we'll do some case discussions at the end of the videos i know you guys have been really enjoying those on my previous vlogs so i've had quite a productive morning today i'm doing this thing where one of my goals for the year is to run 500 miles I talked about it in my goals video um, for 2021 and this morning I decided to take Bonnie out for a little run she's our seven month old border collie puppy um, and she really enjoyed it it was good fun so yeah I went for a run Vince and I went to the tip to get rid of a load of stuff and to recycle loads of things from the house and yeah I've been sorting out a lot of things online like doing some organization of my digital files so feeling good for that um, but I'm looking forward to this shift it's gonna be a good one and yeah I'm enjoying having you guys along with me for these uh, vlogs it makes me feel like I'm not on my shift on my own so let's go and find out which area of the emergency department I'm gonna be working in today and get into the shift and at the end of this vlog we'll do a little sit down catch up chatty car chat that I do at the end of these vlogs so you can hear about the patients that I've seen and just hear a few of my very interesting thoughts <laughs> let's Let's go and get into it. It's ten past six now. So I've been in majors and now I am going around to help out in COVID. Um, so I'm just having just had a bite to eat and a drink so that I'm refreshed and ready in there because once you've got your PPE on, it's very difficult to, uh, <laughs> to come back out. Shift's actually been fairly quiet so far and it's been really nice because I've been able to have a catch up with a couple of my colleagues and quite often on shift we don't get a chance to chat at all. So yeah, it's been really, really nice so far. But let's go and see what's happening on the COVID side because I know they've been busy and that's why they've called me to go around and help. Send to a shift. Snow. That is really, really cool. Oh, there's loads of hospital light. Well, there's loads of lights outside the hospital. And like, as I'm walking along, the snow looks like it's blowing. It's really, really magical. Oh, my snow's cut. My car's covered in snow. Okay. It is so cold and guess who forgot their gloves and scarf? <laughs> I did. Right, it's midnight now. I'm back to my car and I'm about to go home and I can see my own breath. <laughs> 
Um, so I'm going to keep this really brief. I'll just tell you a quick run through of some of the examples of patient cases that I saw, but I'm really, really going to try and keep it brief. So in, I started my shift in majors. I saw someone who had come in intoxicated with alcohol and they'd had a fall and they had a head injury. So uh, got the Masiti head. They had some swelling on their head, but no intracranial injury, so no bleeding within the skull, no bro no skull fractures, no facial bone injuries. So they just needed some wound care and some pain relief. I also saw another patient who'd come in with a fall and they had broken their hip, so fractured neck of femur, which is the top of the thigh bone. What we do for those patients is get them all ready for theatre because the surgeon, the orthopaedic surgeons like to operate on them fairly swiftly. We also put in a fascia iliaca block which is something that um, dulls the pain to that area. I actually find them quite fun to do. Um, it's really satisfying because you've got someone who's in quite a lot of pain and just giving them a simple injection in the right point can take their pain away completely and the reason that we do that is because fractured hips are really notoriously painful it can mean that we end up giving people too much morphine and other opiate medications which have lots of side effects um, and especially in the elderly who tend to be the people that come in with um, fractured hips so being able to give this block to take away the pain locally is a really good thing so yeah they're quite satisfying to do i remember when i first started doing them and like the first couple that i did i was really nervous about but because i was like oh what if i put it in the wrong place but as long as you know your anatomy and you kind of mark things out really well and to really take your time to prepare it's actually not that daunting doing procedures the 90 percent of it is um preparing beforehand and, and knowing what you're meant to be doing during the procedure and kind of running through that mentally in your head. Yeah, I saw a few more patients and then I got asked to go round to the COVID side because they had a big influx of patients. So before I went round there, I quickly had a drink, had some food. Yeah, just to try to make sure that I felt refreshed before going in there because once you've got the PPE on, so the proper mask and um, you wear a visor when you go in to see the patients as well and you've got like a full body, uh, cloak thing on that's definitely not the right word but I'm too tired to think right now and two pairs of gloves um, and once you've got all of that on you don't really go out and have drinks and things you, you might be able to go for one break but yeah it's a good idea to go in there prepared and making sure you feel good and ready yeah that was good and there was good senior support in there so although there were lots of really sick patients it felt more manageable because we had a couple of registrars and a consultant as well as me. I saw some really quite poorly patients in there and the first patient I saw is really really unwell. Sadly I'd be very surprised if she makes it through the next few days. She's really really not in a good way. Yeah that's something that has been most challenging about about working during the pandemic and I haven't really spoken about it a lot on this channel because I, I try to you know keep this channel informative and a lot of upbeat content but it does get to you sometimes working in a place like where I work in the emergency department because you're seeing these really really sick patients and the hardest thing is breaking bad news to them without their loved ones there and then having to have really quite serious devastating conversations with family members over the phone because you just put yourself in other people's shoes and, and think gosh if that was my family member I don't think I'd want to have that conversation over the phone and you would want to be there with your relative comforting them and actually be there in person so that can get to you sometimes and I think you know in the emergency department we only see a, a very small glimpse of that and we're only having those conversations with people when they come in very poorly but I can imagine that having those conversations on the wards and on ITU after you've got to know those patients and potentially their families over the phone and things um, for, for a good while having those conversations are probably even harder um, you know, in A&E, I come onto a shift and I meet that person once and once only most of the time. And then I go home and the next shift I go to, I have a completely new set of patients. Whereas people working on the wards and working in ITU get to know their patients really well. Um, so I can imagine that 
emotionally it's a lot more draining for those members of staff yeah so that's that's a really hard part of the shift but then again it's strange at work at the moment because like I said at the start of the shift I was in majors and it was reasonably quiet which has been unusual we have been really busy recently and you get that downtime where I was able to chat with some of my colleagues so it's kind of like a shift of real extremes um, but that's the emergency department you never know what you're going to walk into you never know how it's going to be I worked a shift last week where I was just completely running around the whole shift really really busy barely a chance to think or breathe and then I get shifts like today where the first half of the shift I was able to catch up with my friends so it swings and roundabouts anyway it's been a really it's been a really good shift and I've learned a few things um, we had someone who came in with burns and there is a formula called the Parkland formula which you use to work out how much fluid you need to give that patient over a 24 hour period um, because patients who come in with burns can lose a lot of fluid because your skin actually helps keep fluid in your body you could probably work that out for yourself <laughs> um, but when you have a burn you can lose that layer and and lose a lot of your body fluid quite quickly so we need to give quite aggressive IV fluid resuscitation. I learnt today how to calculate that amount of fluid that that person needs and uh, yeah so that was my little learning point for the day. I am sitting here shivering so I am going to end this vlog here. I'm sorry I haven't done like a proper formal catch up and any proper teaching at the end of this vlog uh, but I have lots of other videos where I talk about patient cases and yeah interesting stuff that I've done on shift so if you've enjoyed this video then please give it a thumbs up it really helps me and share it with a friend share the love I'd love to have some new followers come and join this channel so yeah I love you guys so much I hope you're all coping well with lockdown just remember this pandemic will come to an end we will be able to hug our relatives in real life and see our friends and things will get better and yeah i know that a lot of us have been using youtube as a way of having a bit of escapism i know i have and you know i just hope that this channel is bringing some of you guys some joy and uh some escapism through this crazy time we're living in love you guys i'll catch you next time bye